So I started with some uh, question. Now we'll discuss the mechanical ventilation during anesthesia. So clinical case scenario, patient, 15 years old, weight 135 kilograms. So the BMI is uh, 50 kilograms per square meter, so it's quite obese patient. This is the real patient. Admitted to the emergency surgical department for suspected appendicitis. No allergies. A little bit history of COPD without any reported medical treatment. There are no pulmonary function tests available or gas analysis as usual. And saturation in air 92. He reports a decreased exercise tolerance uh, for moderate efforts, and the patient refers to sleep uh, at least occasionally with four pillows. So this is a setting of mechanical ventilation of these patients in volume control, 600 milliliters, PIP5, uh, respiratory rate 14, peak pressure 25, plateau pressure 21, uh, FL2 60%, saturation 96. And this is uh, before any laparoscopy or uh, different uh, uh, or trying to remove position of a different position. So, the question one is the entire CO2 in these patients is actually around 58 after 10 minutes of mechanical ventilation. What do we do? A, you keep the ventilation setting, you increase the tidal volume, you increase the respiratory rate, or uh, you perform a, a arterial blood gas analysis. Please vote. We can be more aggressive or less aggressive, as we discussed this morning, more patient, less patient. So, wow. So, almost a 50% increased respiratory rate. So, they fear that entitled to 258 in these particular patients uh, was quite high or are quite uh, more uh, aggressive, we can say. So they perform a blood gas analysis, probably, I think, to have more information about pH and not only on CO2. Interesting. Question two. During anesthesia procedures, the saturation drops down to 86. What would you do? You increase the tidal volume, you increase PIP without recruitment maneuver, you perform a recruitment maneuver, and then you are back to the initial 5 cm water PIP. Uh, you perform recruitment maneuver, and then in some way you increase the PIP. Please vote different strategies even here to deal with uh, desaturation. Of course, you have to exclude that there is no malposition in the tube, there are no secretions. So, look, record maneuver increased PIP in most of 80% of the patients. Interesting. So, last question, then uh, we discuss a little bit more into detail. Recruitment maneuver, how is performed? Because you told me that you perform recruitment maneuver and then you increase speed. So now I want to be more curious of what you do in really clinical practice. So use a bag manual squeezing or you use a CPAP by ventilator or you increase, for example, tidal volume, uh, whatever it is, in volume control or pressure control at fixed a bit higher peak. Or you use a uh, uh, stepwise increase in tidal volume and PIP, uh, which is uh, set usually by some type of ventilators. Please vote. What do you do in clinical practice? Because there are really different options at the bedside uh, if you want to recruit your patients. So half percent uh, are very uh, manual, no? And half percent very high tech. So interesting. So it'll be 
So now we discuss a little bit uh, about some of this uh, issue. Oh, oh, question four. I, I forgot there were a little bit more questions. Now we look at the hemodynamics. Uh, historic arterial pressure drops down at 65 because uh, we don't know if it is because we increase the P, because we have less fluids, because uh, 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 we have uh, too much deep of the anesthesia. So what do you do? Uh, you give more fluids. You start a vasotip drug, for example, noradrenaline. You give fluids and you give vasotip drug, or you reduce inhalation or intravenous anesthetic agents. Different option. Now, hemodynamics, because we talk about ventilation, but we have not to forget hemodynamics, which is clearly interact with mechanical ventilation and, uh, and ventilatory setting. So, most of you, you give fluids and vasoactive draft, but very, very widespread. Here, really, uh, except the fact that we give only fluids, most of you give some vasoactive drug, and some of you uh, first uh, try to reduce uh, anesthesia. So, now we go to the recommendation that uh, were uh, uh, discussing and agreed. The ventilation settings, some of them are similar on the ventilation setting during anesthesia to deliver a tidal volume equal or less than 6 to 8 meters per kilogram predicted body weight in PIT5. And the evidence regarding the inspiratory uh, uh, ratio is really lacking. We usually we use uh, uh, a 1 to 2 in most of patients. So these are the data. Uh, this is a typical CT scan of a patients with some atelectasis in the dependent part of the lung, a little bit cranial shift of the diaphragm, as we can see on the right, with a reduction in the, in the lung volume. And we showed, uh, mixing together the data from uh, uh, the largest uh, trials, that uh, a reduction in tidal volume up to 6 to 8 seems to be associated with a reduction in the risk to develop PPC after surgery, and further reduction does not seem to uh, uh, reach uh, further improvement, but what we know now, as also Emmanuel pointed out, and this I think is the simplest way, first rule for protective ventilation, take care of tidal volume according to the ideal, ideal body weight. How can you compute that? Very easy. Height in centimeter, minus 100 in male, and uh, minus 110 in female. So this rule you can transfer in uh, other unit of measurements, but I think should be at least in our uh, uh, brain or printed in the operating room. And if the ventilators in the future also have some uh, you know, uh, alarm on that, uh, it would be extremely useful. Why I tell you that? Because we know now that obese patients are more likely ventilated with higher tidal volume on predicted, on predicted body weight. You see, uh, 10, up to 15 milliliters per kilogram on predicted body weight. We are convinced to ventilate appropriately these patients according to the actual body weight, uh, 5 milliliters per kilogram, but this is the actual body weight. The ideal body weight is 15 milliliters per kilogram on predicted body weight. So take care, especially in all patients, but especially obese patients, in which we tend to increase tidal volume at higher levels. So what about low PIP during a general anesthesia? If we have a low PIP, we uh, have more atelectasis, we have more shunt. This may be associated with a reduction in oxygenation. If we apply some PIP, we uh, recruit the lung, and that we have to be very cautious at the inspiratory pressure, not to exceed 20, 25 maximum centimeter of water during laparoscopy or in more obese patients. Of course, we know that we have not to use excessive level of P because especially at end expiration, but even at end inspiration, you can squeeze the capillaries to increase the dead space and to damage the lung. And we know that more or less uh, we have not to exceed at the beginning uh, an average level of PIP. That's why we recommend to start with five centimeters of water 
in uh, most of the patients. So another step is to individualize mechanical ventilation, uh, which may improve intraoperative respiratory function, but we know that these effects may be lost uh, after extubation. And the effectiveness, however, of the intervention aiming to optimize the CPM mechanics should be evaluated by measuring uh, some respiratory mechanics data, particularly respiratory system compliance under constant volume, which on the other side is so-called driving pressure. This is a study we performed with uh, the Brazilian friends in Sao Paulo, in which there were two groups. One group uh, was ventilated with low PEEP at four, five, the PEEP that we suggested to start. And the other group, the PEEP was uh, uh, individually targeted on imp elected impedance tomography in order to achieve uh, the uh, highest uh, amount of inflation without overinflation. You see here that when you decrease the PEEP, you have an increase in the collapse, but you have also an increase, uh, decrease in the hyperinflation. If you increase the PEEP, you have a decrease in collapse, but you can have an increase in overinflation. Interestingly, the compliance, so the driving pressure, plateau minus PEEP, at constant tidal volume, at the highest level of driving, at lowest level of driving pressure. This was the level of PEEP in which the, at the IAT you observed less uh, atelectasy. So driving pressure appears to be a quite good indicator uh, to have some information to get the best aeration in the lung. And as you can see here, according to BMI, there is a quite widespread of the individual optimal PEEP according to IAT. And you see that it can range from at least difference between 2 to 4 to 5 to 6 centimeters of water in each patient. And overall, in moral based patients, in order to keep the lung open, attain respiration without overinflation, we require at least 12 to 14 centimeters of water. And the change in driving pressure when you apply PEEP is higher in moro-based patients. You see that moro-based UR, higher is the reduction in driving pressure when you apply PEEP, likely because you are recruiting the lung. When we look at the post-operative atelectasis in the two groups, open or laparoscopic surgery, but one group treated with low PEEP or individualized PEEP, there was a significant difference, a reduction in the amount of atelectasis in the group treated with uh, uh, individualized PEEP. However, this difference, as you can see, is uh, very limited. It's between 3 to 4 uh, percentage of total lung. Of course, this is not a study looking at the outcome of the patients, but open a new window on the investigation of protective ventilation, if, which is the role of individualized PEEP according to the driving pressure in these patients. So PEEP should be individualized to the patient in case this is necessary, in order to avoid increases in driving pressure while maintaining a low tidal volume. And of course, this optimization should be particularly in patients, obese patients during preoperative uh, insufflation, eventually in prone position during uh, back uh, uh, operation and in trendable position. This is the concept of driving pressure. If you apply too high tidal volume with amount of atelectasis, we increase the driving pressure. If we apply PEEP, we can decrease the driving pressure if we open the lung. If we excessively uh, overinflate the lung with PEEP, again, the driving pressure increases. What we have found that when we apply PEEP and driving pressure increase, we are in the last uh, uh, um, cartoon, so it means that we are applying too high level of PEEP. We did not find overall any effect of reduction in driving pressure and less pulmonary complication. But what we know now for sure that when you increase the PEEP, when you individualize PEEP, you have not to exceed the level of PEEP associated with an increase in driving pressure. Recruiting maneuver can reverse alveolar collapse but have limited benefit without the level of PEEP. This is a study in obese patients. You see atelectasis after induction. 
in the upper part you just apply PIP, in the lower part recruit maneuver and zip, and you keep the lung open with time only if you associate recruit maneuver with PIP. But take care to apply for a long time, too long time, very high pressure, because this may be associated with overinflation, higher transformatory pressure, especially in the dependent part of the lung, and reduction in perfusion. So there are different maneuvers. The first is the squeeze bag maneuver, or CPAP by ventilator, that you suggested in most of your answer. Or you have some different uh, changes, so you can increase the PEEP and progressively increase the tidal volume, or to increase the PEEP and maintaining constant the driving pressure, or the so-called multi-step maneuver, so you change the PEEP and uh, maintaining constant the driving pressure. What we found is an association was that back squeezing maneuver in obese patients were associated, this is not a randomized study, uh, with a higher amount of complications. So we believe that we have to be very careful when we apply squeeze back maneuver in our patients. This is a very simple maneuver. It's the step, uh, multi-step maneuver. This can be automatically performed by the ventilator. We have a lower PIP level, and then you set a higher PIP level, for example, PIP 15. Then you set a driving pressure, for example, 10 centimeters of water or 15 centimeters of water in order to achieve your tidal volume. And then you set the number of breaths for each step and the breath at the higher level of PEEP in order to reach, for example, an inspiratory pressure of 35 or 40 centimeters of water. And then you can go back and then you can set the optimal PEEP according to the best driving pressure. You have not to increase too much the respiratory rate, otherwise the, the length of the maneuver is too long. If you do like this, it's one minute and 10 seconds. If you increase to six and six, you can reach up to three minutes to perform the overall maneuver, which is too long. Plateau pressure was discussed by Emmanuel before, so take care of plateau pressure, not higher than 20 centimeters of water. This was associated with increased risk of complication and also driving pressure, uh, take care not, not higher than 13 centimeters of water. So this is the final slide. I think that we can start with a tidal volume between six to eight meters per kilogram predicted body weight. We should adjust the three rate with a tidal, a tidal between 35 to 45, but we have not to take care if a patient or base patient has been increased in tidal. Plateau pressure lower than 1720. PIP starting to fire in the eventually individualized pressure, driving pressure below 13 centimeters of water. Thank you.